from five lands, which is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Ojibwe Cree, Dakota and Dene peoples, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. I'm happy to be here with all of you to launch Manitoba's new skills, talent, and knowledge strategy today. The new strategy provides a vision and sets critical actions for our advanced education, training, and immigration systems in both the short and long term. Economic disruptions from the COVID-19 pandemic will have lasting effects on our global economy. We need to protect jobs and grow our economy through training now and into the future. We are continuing to work toward rebuilding our economy with a focus on safety, resilience and recovery and take action to help Manitobans to learn and work. The pandemic has underscored the need for ensuring that individuals gain the skills and competencies needed for our employers in order to grow our economy, create jobs and promote prosperous communities where all individuals can enjoy a high quality of life. In 2020, the Premier appointed a team of Manitoba leaders to help guide our actions to restart the economy, the Premier's Economic Opportunities Advisory Board. A subset of this team is focusing on post-secondary education and skills development, and their advice has been to focus on the skills and competencies needed in the emerging economy through flexible, nimble systems. Our people are the province's greatest assets. Manitobans are industrious, inventive and talented. And the diversity of our workforce is a solid foundation on which to build future progress. We are proud to launch the skills, talent and knowledge strategy to support efforts to create jobs in our new landscape. The goal of the strategy is to ensure we have people with the right skills at the right time to quickly rebound from the pandemic, ensure resilience and support economic growth now and again into the future. Collaboration have been, has been key to our success in Manitoba and we will work with our partners across the province, including industry, community and advanced education institutions, as well as Indigenous leaders, communities, businesses and organizations to build on our strengths diversify our efforts and achieve even greater outcomes for all Manitobans. Manitoba does many things well. However, we can and need to do more and we, not, and we cannot become complacent. We need a focused approach across the province to ensure that our youth can connect to good jobs and that we build the skills, talent and knowledge that our labour market needs, both now and for generations to come. Our post-secondary institutions want to work collaboratively with government and employers on a positive vision for the future. The Horizon Manitoba report, co-developed by universities and colleges and the Business Council of Manitoba, is commendable. The initiatives in their report will help to further many elements in Manitoba's new skills, talent and knowledge strategy. Right now, I'd like to share with you a video showing the support we've received from our post-secondary partners in launching this new strategy. Hello, I'm James Curry, President and Vice Chancellor of the University of Winnipeg. As a mostly undergraduate university, we teach our students the fundamentals, which are the building blocks of advanced knowledge and skills. To earn an undergraduate degree, students learn how to solve difficult problems, communicate clearly, conduct research, and think critically. These are durable, future-ready skills that professionals rely on throughout multiple careers. Our students also get job experience while attending university through partnerships with industry leaders, like in our theater and film program. We offer master's programs aligned with the needs of industry and graduate innovators who will drive Manitoba forward. The jobs of tomorrow may be different than today, but the fundamentals will remain the same. Change is constant and unpredictable, but our grads will find their way and succeed because they have mastered durable skills and knowledge. À l'Université de Saint-Boniface, anticiper les besoins et les compétences nécessaires pour l'avenir de notre communauté est au cœur de notre mission. 
Depuis ses débuts, l'USB joue un rôle de premier plan dans la croissance et le développement linguistique, culturel, social et économique de la francophonie manitobaine. Nous travaillons avec la communauté et nos partenaires pour que nos programmes continuent de répondre aux besoins sur le terrain. Le travail actuel pour le développement du continuum de l'éducation de la jeune enfance au poste secondaire afin de répondre entre autres à la pénurie d'enseignants et d'éducateurs en est un bon exemple. Nous faisons un travail similaire dans le domaine de la santé pour former les professionnels bilingues dont nous avons tant besoin. Ce sont là que deux exemples du grand apport de l'USB à la société manitobaine, une mission toujours d'actualité que nous accomplissons avec fierté depuis 200 ans. Every day, the most important task we face at the University College of the North is making sure our programs and services are relevant and responsive to the needs of both our students and the Northern workforce. And employers are telling us loud and clear, a skilled workforce is a necessity, not a luxury. So building bridges and creating alignment between education and training and the world of work is critical. Students need to know their education and training will lead to good jobs. Employers need people with skills to grow and prosper. When you're a college like Assiniboine and you're hardwired to the community, aligning your programs to the labor market is second nature. Whether that's adapting programs based on 35 plus program reviews we've done over the last five years, or adding new programs like we've done through our Center for Animal Proteins as a result of trying to address that one in five jobs in the agricultural sector will go unfilled by 2025. This is the work that colleges do day in, day out. The University of Manitoba continues to advance the economic success of our province through world-class research and innovation. Industry partnerships exist throughout our faculties and U of M fosters entrepreneurship and supports commercialization through the Stu Clark Center for Entrepreneurship and the Indigenous Education Business Partners, as well as our Partnerships and Innovation Office, the Manitoba Industry Academia Partnership and North Forge, all located in the Innovation Hub behind me. With all our partners, we continue to expand opportunities for students to build entrepreneurial and innovative skills and become the success stories of today and tomorrow. Hi, I'm David Dougherty, President of Brandon University. We are pleased to welcome this report, especially to recognize our important regional differences in supporting innovation and entrepreneurship. As Manitoba's premier regional university, BU is proud to welcome 80% of our students from Manitoba, with nearly 90% of those from right here in our region. Better yet, three quarters of our graduates choose to stay here, putting down roots and putting their innovative and entrepreneurial skills to work, building Manitoba's economic, social and cultural institutions. Each one is a Manitoba success story, built right here in Brandon. Manitoba's skills, talent and knowledge strategy provides an important framework for post-secondary institutions to prepare students for in-demand jobs while accelerating our economic recovery and growth. As Manitoba's only polytechnic institute, Red River College's programs are uniquely designed in collaboration with employers. We are growing key industries, filling critical gaps in the labour market and positioning our province as a destination for talent here and abroad to study, work, grow, and stay right here in Manitoba. As we continue to adapt to new technologies and economic realities, employers need a workforce trained in hands-on learning, problem solving, and decision making, and collaboration. This is why we are building more pathways for our students, especially our Indigenous, newcomer, and immigrant learners, to move from classroom to career and thrive. And it's why we continue to create the programs and spaces our province needs now as we work together to future-proof education and strengthen industries by connecting them with their graduates trained to meet disruption in all its forms. Together, we can and will build a stronger and more resilient Manitoba. Thanks, and another thanks to uh a big shout out to our uh, post-secondary institutions for helping us with the video and, and all the staff who took part as well. I'd like to uh, definitely make sure that all of you 
uh, reach out and uh, go to the website gov.mb.ca forward slash MB skills to rewatch the video and uh, of course there's the access to the strategy there uh, as well so please uh, check it out. Together we can leverage our collective strengths, support the growth of local talent and create a brighter future for the province. We are moving forward together to advance the work of the strategy, promote a strong economic recovery and ensure even greater opportunities and successes today and for future generations. I'd like to thank all of you for attending today and I look forward to uh, entertaining some of your questions. Thank you, Minister. A reminder to our reporters on the line, you will have one preliminary and one follow-up question. Up first this morning from the Brandon Sun, Kyle. Good morning, Minister. Uh, I was wondering uh, how this strategy is different from the province's past approach to issues such as education and jobs. Thanks, Kyle, for the, uh, for the question this morning. Uh, what we're what we're seeing with this strategy is, as you as you may or may not know, this is a three-year uh, living, breathing document with the strategy, and and uh, you know through extensive uh, stakeholders, communications, and and collaboration, we're taking uh, many different uh, views and and knowledge and uh, basically of, of many of the stakeholders wrap, wrapping it into this strategy, the Manitoba Skills, Talent and Knowledge Strategy today. Uh, so as far as, um, you know, our government approach, I mean, again, we're showing that we're listening and we're uh, willing to collaborate with our many stakeholders throughout the province. And that goes with uh, post-secondary institutions, business, students, various different communities, uh, First Nations, uh, indigenous communities as well and uh, I look forward to to seeing the uh, strategies come to fruition over the next three years. Thank you and, I, and this strategy is mostly meant as a, as a guide for post-secondary institutions and businesses to help them navigate a post-COVID world is that the general uh, gist of it? So, so the yeah yes the the gist of the uh, skills talent and uh, knowledge strategy is absolutely working with uh, uh, post-secondary institutions and our business community to just try to, you know, we know that the world has changed over the last year for sure, and uh, we're going to need uh, more now than, than ever before to be ready for the post-pandemic era. And uh, I think the timing of this as well is, is uh, very important because as we continue to move out of the pandemic, we need to make sure that our, our uh, students or our workforce are uh, skilled up and trained and uh, ready to take on the economy uh, straightforward. From the Winnipeg Sun, Josh. Good morning, Minister. Uh, Josh Aldridge, Winnipeg Sun. Uh, one one talk about uh, the importance of coming out of the uh, uh, pandemic, all trained, ready to go, having the, the students coming out of college in that state. Um, how have those needs changed? What what different skill sets are you seeing that people will need coming out of the pandemic than where we are at pre-pandemic? What What's the emphasis going to be uh, for these students now as we emerge from uh, the pandemic? Thanks, uh, thanks, Josh, for the question. And I and I see. <clears throat> we see that uh, you know working with the various post-secondary institutions in the province and and uh, linking many of the needs uh, from the from labor market uh, needs as well. We need to make sure that we're we're nimble and and ready to rebound after this pandemic. And uh, I think that that strikes us uh, quite well here in the province. I mean, as I said in earlier in in. Uh, in the news release that uh, we do quite a few things well here in Manitoba, but of course uh, we can always do better. And so with uh, listening and collaborating with those partners, I can just, uh, I'm excited to see how the next three years uh, shakes out with, with the strategy and, and uh, moving forward with, with our various different uh, jobs and skills that uh, we're gonna have for, for those employees. 
how much collaboration was done with uh, the high school level uh, education system uh, so that students uh, can have that direction to go into certain areas uh, or to be given the skills so that they are prepared to, uh, to, to, to take on some of these new challenges and uh, go after certain careers or develop certain skill sets in post-secondary school. How much, uh, how much uh, collaboration was done uh, with the K-12 system? So, uh, again, on the um, development of the skills, talent, and knowledge strategy, as we've uh, spoken about already today, and then, then you'll be able to take a look at the strategy online uh, in a few minutes as well. <clears throat> we took, uh, you know, as I mentioned, the uh, Manitoba uh, Horizon report. We took, uh, you know, some feedback from, of course, the Auditor General's report, the college, college review, uh, we're listening to the uh, Premier's Economic uh, Opportunities Advisory Committee. Um, when, when I was first sworn in, I, I mentioned the, uh, the fact that coming from the high school, uh, being a teacher and a guidance counsellor, we know that many students graduating now has, have many great opportunities here in this great province of ours. Uh, I've always been of the mindset to uh, train and retain in this province and many of our post-secondary institutions, uh, you know, we've got uh, well over 50 post-secondary institutions. So when the students are graduating, they have many opportunities to develop their skills and to move on. Of course, some of them could uh, directly go from high school into, say, the apprenticeship. They could go into uh, a college, they could go to a university, they could go to a private vocational institution, or they could also uh, go get a job. But in, we all know that uh, some form of post-secondary education is uh, critical in moving uh, Manitoba forward, and uh, we know that, that we're the right government and we're listening and collaborating with all of those individuals to make sure that that continues uh, now and into the future from CBC Manitoba, Ian. Good morning, Minister. Uh, Ian Frey, CBC. Uh, how much is the government going to spend to implement these recommendations? Thanks, Ian. As, uh, as you know, uh, within the province of Manitoba right now, the, uh, our Department of Advanced uh, Education, uh, Skills and Immigration, we already uh, put uh, well over a billion dollars into our post-secondary institutions. And over the next three years, as, as I've uh, stated a few times already, this is a living, breathing document. And this is not just uh, necessarily a uh, strategy that is particularly just embedded in advanced ed skills and immigration. This is a whole of government approach. And uh, as you heard, uh, right off the get-go in my, in my introductory comments, um, you know, I mentioned all the treaties, uh, the Métis, uh, all of our communities, the businesses. So east to west, north to south, this is an absolutely all hands on deck, um, the betterment of all Manitobans uh, moving forward. So that's, that's the way we're going to roll this strategy out and continue to see it evolve and, and change over the next three years. Uh, the government has expressed an interest in tying post-secondary institutions to the performance-based funding model. Uh, a, I guess, what's the timeline for for that, and when can we see that start happening? Okay, Ian, you you uh, sort of uh, I missed the I missed a part of the question, but I think uh, where you're going was with the uh, the funding models for post-secondary institutions, and so as as you know. Um, Post-secondary institutions, much like the K-12 system, always have been asking for the uh, dollars or their budgeted amounts ready for the next school year to be released to them sooner than later. Uh, we've done that. We're showing once again that we're listening to our partners in the education world. Um, so our so we've we've sent out the uh, the budget numbers to the post-secondary institutions about a week and a half ago and uh, again we're, we're showing that we're listening to our partners in the post-secondary world and uh, they've got their their funding 
uh, when it comes to the strategy and the, and the Manitoba skills, talent and knowledge strategy. This is again a document uh, that we're going to be working with stakeholders and uh, again uh, being transparent and uh, accountable to them in, in, as well as the taxpayers. So this is a document that's going to be looking at those, um, those various different formulas and strategies moving forward over the next three years. From CTV Winnipeg to RIA. Uh, good morning, Minister. I'm wondering if you can provide any more specifics on the skills um, that are being focused on or highlighted in the strategy. Are they related to healthcare, technology? Um, maybe you can elaborate. So the short answer, Taria, is uh, yes uh, to to all of the above. Uh, our um, this strategy again. Uh, was made up from many, many uh, different stakeholders listening to uh, their feedback on creating this strategy. And because it's a three-year uh, living document, there are ambitious goals and plans within the strategy that is going to see us, uh, you know, get going right off the bat. And then as time will roll along, uh, we'll be uh, revamping and taking a look at at uh, how we're we're moving at the post-secondary level, uh, with also some uh, feedback from those from those various other stakeholders. Uh, the main the main goal of the strategy, Taria, is uh, the right people with the right skills at the right time, and that's where we need to go to uh, improve Manitoba's economy uh, post-pandemic. Uh, okay, thank you. And then the latest job numbers show that youth unemployment is uh, fairly high in Manitoba. So I know that the strategy is focusing on skills for after, you know, graduation, but it, what more is the government doing to create opportunities for students while they are still in uh, post-secondary institutions? Okay. Uh, so we know that uh, COVID, COVID hit Manitoba just like it did. Uh, the rest of the country and the rest of the world and I know that uh, I'm proud to be part of the part of a government that that was listening uh, and also uh, fairly nimble when it came to our our job strategy our workforce and uh, in regards to putting in those uh, extra supports uh, for not only individuals but to employers and, and various businesses uh, so I look forward to again working with the uh, rest of my colleagues in in government and the various other departments uh, moving moving this forward and making sure that we've got uh, more um, greater opportunities for our youth as uh, as time rolls along here in Manitoba and our final report of this morning minister from the Winnipeg Free Press Maggie Good morning, Mr. I'm looking to find out how the province will be monitoring, if at all, the strategy and how it's implemented by the post-secondary institutions. Great. Thank you, Maggie. Uh, actually, this is, uh, as I've mentioned a few times, we do have, uh, you know, an ambitious three-year uh, plan. It's uh, the living and breathing roadmap to, for, for some early wins and some long-term gains. And with that, we are going to be uh, making sure that Manitobans, uh, as our government has been uh, since we were elected in 2016, showing that we're transparent and, um, and accountable to the taxpayer, we're going to be making sure that this uh, document and the various different steps along the way are, um, are posted as far as the different uh, strategies and, and um, I guess benchmarks as we go along. So there will be a yearly support, sorry, a yearly uh, report on uh, on how we're doing. Okay, thanks, Minister. And again, I want to go back to the skills and the sectors. Can you give us any sense of what sectors will likely be seeing some movement as we talk about the skills that are anticipated for the future right now? So that's. Uh, that's a that's a great question, and and right now we know that if if you had a chance to take a look at the at the strategy, there's uh, there's four main pillars: it's uh, anticipate, align, foster, and grow, and uh, so that's just it. I think we need to 
uh, maybe do a little bit better job. And that's where the uh, skills, talent, and knowledge strategy will come into play. Again, we're trying to make sure that we've got the right people with the right skills at the right time. And as we move forward with the strategy over the, over the next three years, we're going to see that we need to not be necessarily reactive. We need to be able to anticipate those jobs that are coming out. And so that's why, as you saw in the video, uh, we look forward to working closely with our post-secondary institutions and the various different stakeholder groups throughout the whole province. Again, east, west, north and south. And uh, again, I look forward to to housing the strategy in, in my department, but uh, again, working with all Manitobans. So thanks again. Thank you, Minister. This concludes today's media briefing. Okay. Thanks, everybody.